Hello guys and welcome to another video where we're going to be looking at Curve Fitting from Willem Curve of Imperial College London. The great new software that we've been talking about recently and we just want to give you a couple of quick videos, a couple of quick how-to guides to start using Curve Fitting, start looking at your data and understanding where you might want to use this if you have been using Kessel already, you can use this as a complementary software. If you haven't been using Kessel already, you can use this as a completely free open source software for your XPS analysis. So let's get started with some basic functions and we will return with some later videos for some of the more advanced functions. Okay, so just going to be looking at an old data set uh, with uh, a big batch of samples in. I've already loaded it in uh, because it's quite big, so it just took a little bit of time to load. If you go into uh, file and import, you can bring in all kinds of different file types. You've got VAMAS files, uh, Kratos library files, Avantage data, etc. Uh, curve fitting can handle all of them. And what you'll find up here is a little drop-down menu, uh, which shows us all the different blocks that we've just loaded from this file. Nice and easy to navigate. Now, one of the first things I'm going to do is just head into preferences. I uh, just want to make this look um, a bit different, like how I prefer. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to change this to a line plot. Um, immediately, we, we can't see that line anymore because uh, the, the software puts in a background for you. And because we have no regions at the moment, the background just overlaps our data. So uh, you can set your settings here. We might not be able to see them, um, but maybe if we change the line width, that will appear. Maybe not. Um, the So the raw data line, you can change the line type, whether you want it dashed, dots, solid line. We're going to stick with a solid line here and uh, just go for a line width of one. Same for our background. You can change all of those here. Uh, all of the uh, all of the different settings that, you, that are available to you, you can find in these tabs. If you go into the instrument settings, very useful functions in here. You can see this is just pulled from the metadata in uh, the VAMAS file that I've opened. Um, the other files should be the same as well. Uh, and you can see all of the different options here if you want to change any of your instrument settings or change the library you're using, etc. then you can do so from there. But for now, we're just going to click Save and get on with the first stage of the processing. Right, so basic data processing time. There's a nice little keyboard shortcut, Control P, where you can bring up the uh, region and peak modeling, or you can click up here with the calculate peaks model. And what we're going to be doing here uh, should be quite familiar if you've used Avantage already. If you're more familiar with CASA, uh, then this may be less familiar to you. Uh, we're just going to click the start of end start and end of where we want our region to go we can stick in a few different region types um typically when we're using casa we might stick to a shirley background uh, these smart backgrounds are they operate on the same principle that they do in avantage um so feel free to use those if you are familiar with those otherwise you can stick to a shirley and that behave in the same way that it does in casa and you also have the two guard background options here so I'm going to stick with the Shirley to start with, and we're just going to create a background. And everything's gone. OK, I'm just going back to Scatter for now uh, because I had some issues with visibility. Um, but we're going to have a look at some of the uh, peak fitting functions now. So there's a great keyboard shortcut, Control P, or you can use this option up here to create a peak model. Now, when we do this, if you're familiar with Avantage at all, you will probably be pretty comfortable with this. If you're uh, more familiar with CASA, then uh, then this might be a little bit different than what you're used to. But essentially, we're going to do pretty much something similar in that we choose a, a start and end region, and then we choose a background type. So the smart and multi-region smart, again, if you're familiar with Avantage, you will be familiar with what these are. Um, if you are unfamiliar and, and more of a CASA user, essentially, these will fit the try and fit the best background it can depending on uh, the data and the region. Uh, we're going to stick with the Shirley background for now so that everyone's comfortable, everybody knows what this is. I'm just going to click on Create a Background, and that inserts this Shirley background um, in here uh, and making sure it goes through and passes through the limit points that we've set. 
So now we're going to head into peak fitting. So we, we have a few different models that we can choose from. So I'm just going to go to a, an LA type peak. And we're going to start, we're just going to add a single peak. And there's going to be our CCCH peak. And we can probably add in another one somewhere over here. And another one, yeah, probably about there. So what we can do now uh, is we can click on fit one time or fit n times and that will perform uh, a, a least squares fitting you, you can change the method here but by default least squares uh, to your data set and we can see what we get and as you can see much like in casa the functions if you just let it do whatever it wants then you're probably not going to get the best fit so we can then start to use some of these constraints to improve our data fit and make sure we get something that's a little bit more reliable and, and sensible. Okay, so we have our initial peak model in, but of course now we want to apply some of our constraints. So same as in Casa, same as in Avantage, we can lock some peaks together. So in the green uh, rows, we have some of our um, constraint parameters. So I'm just going to type A into the full with half maximum constraint box and A into the full with half maximum constraint box here. And now everything should lock together when we click fit again. And now you can see all of the full with half maximum are set to 1.25. And it still looks a little bit odd, um, but we can work on those. Um, one thing to note as we've added these, there is a function up here, a magical mystery function that CASA has been missing for many, many years. There is an undo. So if you do do something and you want to undo it, there is an undo, there's a redo function, uh, probably the biggest quality of life update in XPS fitting since the invention of the computer. Uh, right. So we're going to do the same thing in this column here. So this is going to lock the uh, line shape parameter, no, the line shape parameters um, to be equal across the components. So A times one, A times one. Now, if we click fit again, what we can hopefully see is that our peaks that we've put in now look all the same. Uh, we've got the same parameters up here and uh, we now have a consistent fit for our CCCH and then some uh, oxidated carbon species here. Okay, so we're also just gonna have a quick look at the surveys and see some of the features that uh, curve fitting has that can help you get your surveys into a, a format that you can use them uh, for peak identification labeling etc uh, so if you notice up in the top toolbar there is a little icon that says id so we're just going to go ahead and open that one now i know what this sample is uh, because it's, it's some molybdenum oxide that we were working on so i'm going to select the uh, the elements that I, I'm pretty sure are in there, molybdenum, oxygen, and carbon, because it's XBS, we always have carbon. And what you can see on this little side panel here is we now have a bunch of possibilities for the, all the different transitions. You can also see the the peaks with uh, the red lines. They label the, the different peaks that you might see uh, and the, the expected kind of intensity ratios. So... Uh, we can kind of line those up with the peaks that we have as well. Um, so we can see, yes, we've got some molybdenum 3D, some molybdenum 3P, the 3S, the O1S, the C1S. So yeah, we pretty much got what we expected. So I'm just going to label the main peaks here. So I've got carbon 1S, the oxygen 1S. I'm also going to label the oxygen KLL because, you know, this is pretty sizable. Um, so if I was showing this survey to identify what was in a sample i might say well look, this is a pretty major peak so i'm going to label this as well um we're going to label the the 3d and the 3p and because they are quite big and yeah let's we'll go ahead with the 4s and the 4p as well um and i'm just going to click on add labels and then um we can just clear selected and close this down and what we've got now 
is a, a nice XPS survey, which has got the major peaks labeled. You can export this if you go to a file export. You can export as a Python plot, so you can make this look however you like, or just export as a PNG, so you can put this in your reports and your presentations and your uh, publications um, with all of the the peaks kind of identified um, that you uh, that you want to show that are in your sample. Okay, that's it for today. A really, really quick look at curve fitting, just some of the basic features help you get started with your peak fitting using curve fitting in different ways. Um, we again really, really recommend that you watch some of Gwilym's videos. We will link his channel again uh, where there's a lot more detail and depth and we will be back at some point with some more looks at some of the functions that you can use in curve fitting and also some of the ways that curve fitting can help your analysis even if you use Castor XPS there's a few ways that curve fitting can complement that and you can you kind of use the functions of both uh, to really maximize what you can get out from your XPS data so thanks for watching and we'll see you soon